folks. Welcome back to the Field and Garden Podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Mason Ziegler, and thanks so much for joining me here. I am super excited about the episode today, and y'all know how I am. I have got so much to pack into this episode. I have papers and devices in front of me so that I do not leave out anything for you guys. So this is the first of five episodes that we promised you um, back in the announcement episode about course by course, session by session. And so this is the first one in that series of five that is really taking you kind of a reveal sneak peek into our online flower based business courses. And, um, you know, I promised you that we were going to go through each of our school courses session by session along with the instructor. And along the way, we'd be answering those questions, um, the ones that we just hear over and over again. And we totally understand. I mean, I get it, right? So in this episode, I'm going to be strolling you through our flagship school course, Flower Farm and School Online, the basics, annual crops, marketing, and more with yours truly, Lisa Mason Ziegler, that which would be me. So this is my course. This was the very first one we launched. Um, and so that is the one that is at the top of the queue to share with you guys. So I'm also going to be sharing how this course is helping students to start, expand, and to even hit the reset button on their existing businesses. And y'all, I just absolutely loved what Janet said. This is what she wrote. We wondered hilariously if the basics was too simple for us. We quickly saw how much more we had to learn and found Lisa's style to be straightforward, down to earth, well organized, and very informative. We would highly recommend to anyone, even if they've already had one or two or even three or four years of farming experience. So thank you, Janet. Um, and that this is what we're going to do through this episode is I'm going to share in this course what's in it and how it's affected some of my students. Um, and so one of the questions that we get oftentimes is, who is this instructor? Um, from folks that, you know, aren't in the flower farming industry perhaps quite yet. And it's a big industry now. And so not everybody um, knows everybody. So we are deliberately introducing our instructors. And so who is Lisa Mason Ziegler? Well, um, folks, I began growing and selling cut flowers back in 1998, literally after reading a book about it. I was a novice gardener at best when I read that. And I just jumped off and launched my farm and just plunged myself into the commercial cut flower growing business. And my little farm has gone through so much growth through the years, y'all. Um, during the run of what I like to refer to as our high production years, which was about eight years of my 20 some year career, um, during that time, we were producing 10 to 15,000 stems of flowers each week in season from my field grown operation, which never comprised of more than one and a half acres of garden. You know, along this journey, I've written um, three books, became a nationally recognized speaker on growing cut flowers. I was doing like over 80 lectures a year, y'all, in the off season. And then I was also just so pleased and proud to serve on the board of directors for the Association of Specialty Cut Flower Growers. Um, and my hope and my drive is to help others find their treasures in flower farming like I have. Now, a question that we really know is in the back of a lot of people's head, but they aren't quite sure how to ask it. But the bottom line is, who should take this course? Who's the course for? Do you have to be qualified? Or is it too basic? Or is it too advanced for certain groups? And 
What we say to people about my course is anyone that wants to focus on becoming a profitable business is the person that should take this course. Um, there is surely room for, you know, those avid gardeners that want to come along and just learn all of our insider farmer tips. We openly armed invite those people in. But this course was designed to help those that want to build a successful flower farm, which can be five beds in your backyard, y'all, up to acres. If you want to grow and sell flowers, this is the course for you. And as I mentioned earlier, that could be somebody that's just starting, someone that's been in it for a year or two, or it can be somebody that's been doing this for years, but they still are overwhelmed, they're exhausted, they're not making a profit, and they need to hit the reset button. So what does this course teach? So I am going to take you through the syllabus and just kind of give you my thoughts on um, the, all the areas so you can get a really good idea. Um, and it really gives the steps and confidence to the beginner or that seasoned grower to get their business going in the right direction. Establishing a legal business, organizing your business days, growing what sells, finding your customers, how to sell it to them, harvesting it and packaging it. Um, my course will really lead you to make that leap from overwhelmed, exhausting days with flat sales to an in-control business owner making a profit. It's hard work, y'all, but when you do it alongside others with the same goal, I just can't even tell you how much the load is lightened. So how long does it take to go through the course? Um, so my course, as all of our school courses are, is split out into six classes that are delivered um, to you over a six-week period. Plus, I join you each week for a live Q&A coaching session, plus another coaching section ses session two weeks after school ends for a total of seven live Q&A sessions. Um, and don't worry, y'all, even though school ends, our contact does not have to end there. You have the option to join my closed alumni Facebook group where the conversation continues. The student community that has developed in there is so supportive and helpful. And of course, I continue to drop in and out of there answering questions. I do impromptu live videos from the farm periodically. And that is something that goes on indefinitely. And you're in there with our other alumni. So you have people that have been growing longer than you, as well as those people that are coming on after you. So it is really a, an amazing mix of people all with the same thing in mind. So people ask, what kind of results could a, should a student expect after taking a course? And, you know, friends, I can say with total certainty that the students that put in the time to follow the course and do the work are taking their dreams and starting businesses. Um, I'm going to share a couple with you, but I would highly recommend that you go to my course page at thegardenersworkshop.com and go to the student reviews and read what people's firsthand experiences are all about. So before we jump into the syllabus, I want to just share what a couple of students have said. Tracy says, this course saved me years, if not a career in flower farming. Lisa is a believer in all of us, and my life has forever changed because of this course. You all, you might think that's a little over dramatic, but let me tell you something. Going into business is serious business. And to have somebody walking with you that wants you to be as successful and that has the experience and the wisdom and is willing to walk with you and share it is pretty priceless. Um, and that is what, that's our goal. Um, and that's, we are constantly adding to our web of support to see that our students get that help that they really, really want. And here's what Sharon says. One of the best parts is you can keep referring to her class anytime 
So friends, let's take a look at the syllabus. I'm just going to walk you through here kind of quickly, but to kind of give you an idea of what you could learn about. So again, there are six classes. Class number one is about starting and sustaining a business. And there is over eight sessions in there. And no, session one is, you know, how to clear time to start and run a business. You know, where does our business day go, y'all? This really helps you to structure your day, um, the steps that I take, and how I can actually do that, how you can help you reorganize your time. So, you know, it's about session number two is about the business. And here's the number one lesson that I want people to walk away from this with is that this is business, y'all. This is nothing personal. Um, it is the professional face of your business and what, how to choose your name um, and what should be behind that. And a really big part of that is recognizing that you need to go from a gardener to a farmer. Um, and that may say sound kind of silly to you, but it is like night and day difference, you all. And that's what session two is all about. So session three in that class is all about money matters. Um, I am a big believer in setting goals of what are you aiming to do. Um, it also takes you into doing the books. How are you going to accept money? You know, how are you going to process that? And yes, you need to consult a CPA, whether you think you do or not. Whenever you're setting up a legal entity, it can affect your tax status. And it is so worth it. I will tell you that 24 years in, and I'm still with the same CPA that I've met with before I started my business, and what she forecasted, in fact, came true. They know more than we do about that area, friends. This is the kind of stuff that you're going to learn about in the money matters. Then in session four, we're talking getting legal and professional. You have to have a plan, you guys. You have to have insurance. You've got to get licensed properly and you've got to figure out sales tax. But guess what? We tackle all of this nobody wants to do stuff in the first week's class so we can get it done, face it, and put that boulder off your shoulder. I'm not kidding you. People, I know a lot of people that don't set up these things then kind of get caught in a situation that they created and it's really a problem and you can't tell me that they don't think from time to time subconsciously what if somebody finds out that I'm not licensed or what if something happens and I don't have insurance. You might not think those things are weighing on you but friends they are. Session five is taking stock of your resources. You know, you know, I'm the girl that is all about, I'm pretty sure most people have enough stuff to start. I started literally with a wheelbarrow, a shovel. Doesn't this sound like your parents talking? A wheelbarrow, a shovel, some seeds. And I will say Steve did come with the tiller. That really helped a whole lot. But you can, if you're not in a position to have a lot of cash to get started, there are things you can do to get started without going in debt. I highly recommend people not even consider going into debt. Um, and I love sharing ways on how I suggest you get some cash. Um, session six is getting organized. I am the worst record keeper in the world, y'all, for gardening, seed starting, harvesting, all of that. And I share the way that has revolutionized my life for record keeping. And um, then we also talk about how you can actually make a schedule up that you can live with and fulfill instead of feeling like a loser every day by not getting everything done that you wanted. Session seven, life balance. This is a really, really important one for me. I will help you draw the line in the sand of you don't have to work from sun up to sundown, y'all, um, because this profession, just like most businesses, is not rocket science, but it's persistence and efficiency that leads the way to success. And we also touch on hire and help. Um, then session eight from that first week is business stumpers. This is where we stump and hit our toe, guys. 
where we make excuses. Excuses are really just reasons why we're afraid to start. Um, and we're not going to be accepting any excuses. If you want to do this, I am going to walk with you along with all of your classmates to get you where you want to go. So friends, guess what? That is week one. That is slam packed full of week one. Week two is a little funner. Um, so I you know, when I built this course, I was a little afraid after I made that the first week. I thought, oh, people are going to be so disappointed. You know, where's all the flowers? Where's, you know, where's the the icing on that cake, right? Um, but through now, this will, you know, we're going into my fourth enrollment year. Um, students share that perhaps um, this is one of the things that just really gave them assurance from the very beginning. This is what Kara said. Something that really sets this course above and beyond is the ongoing personal support that Lisa provides through the closed alumni Facebook group and with alum, um, impromptu lives. The live Q&A sessions during school, what I've appreciated the most in this course is Lisa's love for the farming lifestyle and her passion to share it with her students. Friends, I just want everybody to join in this fun we're having. And um, so let's look at week two. Week two is about building and managing the working garden. So the first session is working the garden design. And friends, I think the wake up call here for people is they automatically think of what flowers do I want to plant? Well, I do think about that, but it's not at the top of my list. My plan is 100% about how am I setting up this garden to be maintained and then to be torn down? Where are the windbreaks? Do I have to plant a windbreak? What about succession planting um, and laying out the beds? So we look at all of that. Session two is soil building and management. How to get started building your soil um, through, you don't have to like have perfect soil when you start y'all, nobody does. It's the steps that I follow. And there are so many different ways to do this y'all. This is just the way that I went about it to build my soil using leaf mold and compost and cover crops. Um, session three is about making beds. And there's actually multiple sessions or many sessions in this session we take you through, or I take you through, building beds by hand, building beds with a walk behind tiller, building beds with you have a tractor and the bed layer. And then I take you through how to finish the beds off, regardless of which way you made it. And then also just some general tips. So friends, it doesn't matter where you are. First off, if you don't have a tiller yet and you're still making beds by hand, it definitely gives you goals. Um, once you see where the progression can take you and how much easier the job gets. Session four is flower farming tools. We're talking irrigation, support netting, fertilization, and low tunnels. Those, those key pieces, because y'all remember, I don't have any hoop or greenhouses. Um, so those four items um, are key pieces for me in session five, we talk about cover cropping, um, the benefits and the warm and cool favorites and how to use them. And I want everybody to remember this. I didn't start out using cover crops. I grew as I mastered farming, I started adding them in. So don't feel like you have to do it or you're doing something wrong. It's a goal again. Session six is about weed and pest concerns, my prevention, how um, to read your soil, about ditching those pesky crops, and to really, and y'all, I can't say this enough because I have to remind students all the time, do you even know what pest that is before you start trying to figure out what to do about it? ID identification is king in the pest world, and there are a lot of ways to figure that out. Um, so that is what is in class two. Um, and there is, it's very deep and wide. And so I'll just share you what Janie has shared with us um, that three years ago, I only knew enough to plant the beds around my house. This year, the farm where I work has put me in charge of their flower program designing and planting a field of over 7,000 flower plants and 
marketing them in our farm store. I could not have done this without Lisa's course. Do y'all know how make that makes my heart just want to explode? That is what I'm talking about. You know, not only do I give you the information, um, but it's the confidence that you gain from having this information, being with other people that are going to be like a bunch of ants, y'all, and run under you and hold you up when you need it. And that's what our communities are all about. All right, class three, selling what you grow. So many people are so afraid to sell. And y'all, it's not, you don't have to be a salesman and it's not a sales job. Um, by way, virtue of what we do, our love of our product and how beautiful it is, it really makes the selling very easy. But there are definitely steps that you need to follow to be a professional. So in session one, we talk about the potential customers. Um, first off, you have to break the stereotype that's out there. That's why so many commercial like florists are resistant to local buying. It's because they're used to the, you know, the, the vegetable farmer or the grain farmer throwing in some sunflowers and showing up at their back door saying you want to buy some flowers and seeing that they're, you know, not top quality and not what they're looking for. We have to overcome that. And I help you with that. What markets fit you, your growing environment, and your family? Growing to your market. Um, and that means, you know, it's like I am not an event grower. I grew staple flowers that florists used day in and day out that sold great at farmer's market and made beautiful supermarket bouquets. You know, I'd never went down that event rabbit hole. Um, and so you have to grow for your market. And then, y'all, the big question we are always facing, pricing. Yes, we talk about this and give you the equation to figure out how to find the pricing in your area. Session two, deep dives on the specific customers. Now, we have a session on each one of these areas within this session. Florist, farmer's markets, supermarkets, on-farm sales, for like a private market like I run for members only, and then like a public farm stand. We visit all of those. Um, and so session three is customer service. Y'all, I am all about customer service. It's my motto. It's like my flagship of everything. Um, how we can make purchasing our flowers more convenient for our customers. And y'all, what is really a big pet peeve of mine is being a professional, that's where we go to the next level with our business, where you are able to deal with different customers and being a professional. So session four is marketing, getting the word out there. Um, you know, I can remember, and I think I talk about this um, in one of the sessions, I can remember back when I would go to bridal, like, um, conventions just to see who the local florist were. Um, and I would give out my card, but I really didn't want just their bridal business. I wanted their whole, you know, I wanted to find out who they were so that I could go and make a cold call. Then their social media. Did you know that we have an image library for our students of my images that we let you use in your social media on your website until you're able to actually get imagery. And y'all, I wrote it here in this area. We have bonuses all over my course, but this class has over nine or ten bonuses, I think. Um, ton of stuff. So session five in this class six, I'm sorry, class three, is making bouquets. There's a video about preparing the flowers um, and then actually making what we call speed bunch bouquets. Um, that'll really, really help you. Tons of bonuses in there. And so we're marching right on, gang, right into class four. What are you going to grow? So friends, I have to tell you that perhaps the key to success, those folks that are really nailing it, um, in building their businesses with the least amount of bruises and cuts <laughs> on their 
you know, pocketbooks as well as their arms and their hearts is to really follow kind of this recommendation that I give. And that is for those of us that are starting out to stick with growing annuals while you figure out this business. Whether, I mean, that's figuring out seed starting, building your gardens, planting, harvesting, managing your garden. Then you got to find customers. You have to sell to customers. You have to package for customers. You have to deliver to customers. There's so much to learn, y'all. Do it with crops that, A, I never went away from this model, y'all. I never ventured on to expand in other ways, which we talk about during school. Um, so there is definitely big business to be had here. But we, I recommend that you start with annuals, those high demand annuals, and learn how to do your business. And it doesn't, if you have failures and when you screw up, because you will, the road to success is paved with failures, screw ups, and mistakes. It's required y'all to get there. So in session one, we're talking about growing seasonally outdoor. That is really my niche. It's about the roadmap of outdoor growing. Um, it fit. You find what fits in your conditions. The, the better you job you do of that, the easier it is to actually grow. Then in session two, we talk about producing consistently. This is the story, y'all. Succession, succession, succession. It's easier to sell flowers when you have a consistent supply. And how much should you grow? You know, that's always a really big question. Then in session three, we're talking about warm season annuals. And in session four, we're talking about cool season annuals, things like when to plant, providing for their needs, and just how to keep those blooms coming, right? Then in session five, we go to that supportive landscape. This is planting beyond the garden. Um, not only do I have some woodies, things like hydrangeas um, that are out in different areas on my farm that we cut from, but there's other benefits. First off, it's home base to all of these beneficial creatures that live on my farm, you know, from birds to beneficial insects to pollinators to everything else. But we're also thinking about windbreaks, um, backup plantings, um, and just, there's a whole lot more. Then in session six, I am sharing my top 20 producers, easy keepers that are excellent sellers. Then in um, session seven, I talk about some other worthy, not annual crops like tuberoses, because um, there are some that are worthy to get in the ground that you can go on to benefit from later, but they're so productive that they really make them worthy. And then, of course, there's bonus training in there as well. But, you know, here's the other thing I haven't mentioned yet. In each class, in each week, all of the year's previous Q&A sessions, like I would have with you if you were a new student, are recorded and in your library. So you can go back and watch previous years. And there are some awesome questions in there, y'all, and answers. So we're almost, we're almost there, y'all. We're on class five, starting seeds. So session one is, do I start seeds or do I purchase plants? That is the million dollar question, right? So <clears throat> I'm sharing sources as well as Canadian sources um, from our, you know, good flower farm and friends in Canada have provided us with. We're talking about sourcing seeds, sourcing plugs. How do you buy plugs? How do you read a commercial catalog um, and storage and so much more. Session two is how to start and grow transplants indoors. So that is about you know, soil blocking steps, um, the seed starting steps indoors, starting cuttings. Um, we do root a couple of crops, kind of showing you my steps for those, and you can expand on that all you want. And then we talk about soil blocking, of course. Um, and then I also share in session three how to plant seeds out in the garden. You know, there are some crops that just really, really prefer that and are easier. So I'm sharing my tips to success how to prepare the bed tops. 
doing the seeding, um, how you can do weed prevention like I do to have like no weeds in your direct seeded bed, y'all. And I'm not talking about endless weeding, right? Then I'm going to talk about in session four, the rules of commercial seed starting. How many are you supposed to start? When are you supposed to start? Pinching, planting out, um, just so many of those steps. Then in session five, Suzanne and I take you through our simple steps of building a really inexpensive germination chamber. Why you need to have a chamber, the supplies, and how to do it. Session six is my famous seed starting calendar. Um, there are several documents with planting schedules for cool and warm and when to transplant and sowing outdoors. Multiple bonus sessions, y'all, in class five. So we're heading into the last class, which would come out in week six of your course. Class six is harvesting and conditioning flowers. Session one is the commercial harvester's toolbox. This is the equipment you need to have. I mean, we're talking about preparing buckets, moving buckets. That may not sound like much when you only have five buckets, but when you have 50 buckets, this is a big deal, or even 100 buckets. Um, washing buckets, cool rooms, as well as coolers. In session two, we're talking about harvesting practices, the techniques, bloom quality, the schedule, how to stretch out flash crops, when to harvest, and when to trash flowers. Session six is the condi conditioning steps and products that I use, um, why and how I use them, how you educate your customers that that's why your blooms last so long, and where you should be purchasing those products. In session four, um, this session is where to make the cut, stage to harvest, where to make the cut, why you have to strip them, and we do that on both cool and warm flowers. So this class also has multiple bonus um, sessions in there, harvesting Lizzie, harvesting Callas, harvesting um, Lizzianth, I'm sorry, not Lizzianthus, Celosia plumes, coxcomb, harvesting hairy balls, harvesting zinnias, harvesting um, stage to bloom, um, to cut lime, light millet, cool flowers, and then sunflower harvesting. Y'all, there are so many bonuses. I just can't hardly help myself from adding more stuff. Um, and then we have the wrap up video, which is me talking on how when you follow the steps in this course, um, it can really make your quality of life better, how to help you prevent burnout, and then how to go the long haul. Friends, I want you to be flower farming 20 years from now. Um, this course includes everything you need to start, expand, or to hit the reset button on your existing flower farming business. But here's another thing, gang. If there's some burning question that you have that's not addressed in one of these sessions, guess what? You just ask it um, for the live Q&A session. And the way that those work, those are not on Facebook. That is on a private platform. You, We encourage you to submit your questions beforehand so that we can organize and get them all answered. But we, I also will take live questions during that session um, as time allows. And y'all, those live coaching sessions are so important to me and I know that they've become important to my students. And the thing that I just want everybody to remember is that there is room for more flower farmers in this country and all over the world as we are learning more and more day in out and day in. It is unfolding how the demand is um, is disrupted in the global demand or the supply, not demand. The supply is disrupted and that is not going to be changing anytime soon. But here's the thing, during this time of really bad times is the time for us to let these commercial customers know who we are, what we've got, and what we're made of. We are professional growers that can deliver high quality crops to them as they need them. And y'all remember, the rising tide lifts 
more boats. So friends, I hope to see you in school. Uh, my course opens once a year for five days. Typically, it's the first of October, and then school starts the first of November and runs for six weeks. And I hope that we'll meet there. So folks, I hope this was helpful and beneficial. And until I meet you again, ciao.